much have been heard and seen of DYC in Delta State. What does DYC stand for in earnest and what is the mission? Well, uh, DYC is an abbreviation for um, uh, Delta Youth Coalition. The uh, Delta Youth Coalition is a political pressure group and uh, we are in for good governance and the aims of objectives that we have is to ensure that we enthrone uh, uh, good governance and uh, ensure returning of dividend of democracy to the people at the grassroots level. In the election that just happened, we saw so many support groups actively participating. How much of involvement was DYC in the elections in Delta State? Yeah, Delta Youth Coalition, yes. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, we played a whole lot of vital role on the election process because we know that the election process is what determines the persons who come into governance. And as people who preach the dividend of democracy and the good governance, we must make sure that we are key into the election process to ensure that uh, the right persons are uh, being enthroned into power. We witnessed in the last election, let me say specifically in Delta State, what people generally described as a protest vote from the youth. We witnessed a clean sweep for the Labour Party in the national election, but reverse was the case in the subnational election in Delta State. What went into that and what really transpired? Uh, well, yeah, you know, in Nigeria, uh, a whole lot of um, uh, leadership tussle and leadership crisis is already erupting on the uh, people of uh, uh, the country. And um, they are really eager to have a sense of belonging, this, you know, uh, 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 a practical aspect of governance uh, that they are lacking from even the incumbent. So they really need a, a, a realistic uh, governance, not the hanky-panky type. So as a result, the youth, which you know that controls uh, majority of the votes, uh, this time around said no, that we must come out in mass and uh, do a protest vote to bring in somebody whom we believe in. So that was exactly what happened. You know, days have gone when it has to do with whatever the party brings, then people will just, you know, vote the person in. Uh, we, we have decided to change the narrative that we must know the capacity or the ability of the person who is coming into the system so as to ensure that the aim of electing such a person will not just be in vain. What was the consideration? From all you have said, it looks more like a personality election, not just the party, but the reputation and integrity of the individuals at the ballot. What was the overriding perception that informed voting for Mr. P2B of the Labour Party in the presidential election and right on a Rochelle Fobore of the People's Democratic Party at the gubernatorial election in Delta State? Yes, um, you know, in the presidential election per se, uh, uh, people wanted to change the concept of governance, as I said earlier. And as a result, in all the candidates, they felt they have more belief in delivering the dividend of democracy to the people in Pitobi most importantly the youths. That is why you saw the drive. In as much as there are other persons who are equally very okay on the race. In that presidential election in Delta State, for instance, uh, people wanted, if not for anything, they knew that Okowa has the ability for a good leadership. Uh, even if as he's running as the vice presidential race, at the same time, uh, there was an issue on ground. He lost. 
he lost not because uh, people dislike him as a koa or people did not like his principle but they had some level of negligence as a party until the body that makes election happen which is the political pressure groups most importantly in Delta State. They neglected them and they didn't take care to understand their plight because they control about 60-70% of the voters. So if they had done the needful by marrying them, taking them as one, listening to them, I don't think that what happened in that presidential election would have gone the way it went it would have been a different bargain but that has come and gone and uh, it actually taught a lesson to an extent but in a case where somebody who you know have gotten experience from a lesson you now do the needful so as a result in the governorship election they had to do the needful they brought in the political uh, pressure groups alongside and realign and it works and that not just that it worked the candidate itself is a superman is a man that people believe in is a man that is a practical politician is a is in fact is somebody that can tell you something and still keep it you know the day we went to see him he was about living I said, Your Excellency, we are here to say. He said, No, that our schedule have not come on, on his table. That he has other things ahead of him. You know, that is, that is uh, I mean, that is sincerity. You know, I saw that. I said, Yes, I, I, it's okay. He said that we have to reschedule. I said, Your Excellency, no problem. He's aware. So we left because we had no uh, a schedule with him. Uh, as at that moment, our schedules have not gone to his table, but it's for that, for that same day, you know. So, uh, you see, the kind of person he is made people to vote him in, and they believe in him, and the youth believe in him. So, and um, if he could understand the nomenclature, that means that the government is about to take charge now he will enjoy it more than ever because the youth will always be there for him. We understood that there were a lot of deals and negotiations with the pressure groups by the political parties in Delta State after the presidential elections. What was the selling point for the PDP and right on every sheriff of Borewari that made it happen for him in Delta State? Uh, well, on that note, um, every other political party made move apart from PDP making their move, uh, even the uh, Labour Party made their move, uh, APC made their move, SDP made their move, among other political parties, even NMPP. So they all made their moves. But you know, in a case where you have a party that you believe in, a party that you have confidence in, which is the PDP that we worked for, we have that confidence that the candidate they brought is credible and he has the capacity to lead the state to a better level as a matter of fact there is this continuity spirit that we as people we saw in him unlike some people though he will equally demonstrate it and we will see it unlike some other persons that when they come into power they will you know leave the or abandon you know the existing projects or dream of the state or the party without finishing it and that will always be set back to development strides so in the case of sheriff oberovori who is the practical governor elect in no in no distant days uh, a few days to come he will become the executive governor of data state and he will demonstrate that character of leadership that we the people will believe that he can we've seen visuals of your interface with some politicians in data state we've seen your interface with the deputy governor elect we've seen your interface with the data south senatorial candidate and the senior power broker for pdp in data state honorable michael didden ajale 
how much of influence did these politicians exert on the pressure groups that made it happen for PDP in Delta State? Uh, well, um, uh, coming to that, uh, persons like uh, Monde Nyeme, of course, is somebody who is loved by the people. So as a result of that, uh, his personality also contributed to the victory of the party for the governor election. And uh, the interface we had with him gave us a voice that uh, we believe that those things that we discuss, that if elections uh, uh, is being delivered, or uh, that victory is delivered for PDP, that better things will turn up for Delta State, not just, just practically we as a pressure group, because we believe in the victory of all. And uh, that of uh, uh, Michael Diden, uh, popularly known as a Jele. Of course, he's a powerful politician. He's a man of his words. That is why we, the pressure group, uh, practically the DYC, uh, we are so confident that we are with him. As a matter of fact, uh, if he says he will do this, he will do. So because of that, we had a practical uh, interaction with him. Uh -huh. And that practical assessment make him to understand what we can do. Uh, he gave us a tax that is so heavy, but at the same time we are able to deliver accordingly, uh, among others. I know there is this natural inclination to manage information, but what were the promises made? What were the deals reached? How much of those promises have been kept? And ultimately, where do you stand on politicians' capacity to come good on their promises? Okay, um, you see, during the election campaigns, a whole lot of promises were made through us, the Delta Youth Coalition, because even in our campaigns, sometimes we do midnight campaign and all that, you know, there are areas who don't even have transformer. Promises were made by the party that they will give them transformer. You know, uh, in as much as those promises are not yet fulfilled, among other empowerment uh, uh, promises that were given to some persons that have not been fulfilled, we know that maybe, or practically because a whole lot of process of inauguration and all that for the incoming government, you know, that actually distracted this uh, campaign promises, but we believe uh, on the uh, incoming administration that they will take it up from there because con uh, uh, governance is all about continuity. So they will pick it up from there with our confidence without letting the party down because we should always know that uh, uh, end of an election uh, year is the beginning of a new election process. So, and if that is done, or if that is understood, they should also know that four years is like a four days. It will just come in a twinkling of an eye. And those people you neglected or you gave promises without fulfilling, you are still going to go back to them. And I am pleading, or rather suggesting, that the system of governance of the past should not repeat itself. I'm suggesting that if it's possible, there should be a, a town hall meeting from time to time. You know, using these same people, the pressure groups and other parasitas, to reach out to the grassroots people so that we always have this synergy from time to time before the election year. Because when you always come to them after four years, they will see you as uh, coming to uh, take vote from them and not returning any dividend of democracy and that is wrong but if you able to interact with these people from time to time know what their problem is if there is any uh, promises made you try to meet up to keep those promises so that when next you come to meet them they will not they, you don't even need to overstress yourself the stressing of election time is as a result of bad governance or rather promises not kept 
that will stress you during the next election. But if you're able to keep promises, which I believe that it's nothing for government to keep promises, most importantly, what will affect the livelihood of the people, you know. So that is it. You are grassroots going by what you're doing with Data Youth Coalition which means you understand the pulse of the people, you understand the yearnings, you understand the disconnect between the perception of the people and government. Going forward, what are those areas that you feel, other than the ones you've just mentioned, that you feel government should pay sufficient attention to discourage this harmony and discontent between the government and the governed in Delta State? Okay, now, um, on that, I believe in empowerment arrangement. Uh, the youth should be empowered. The government in place have done a whole lot in that area. So I'm um, equally urging the incoming government to continue from where the uh, outgoing government has stopped. Even we, as DYC, we are doing a whole lot. As a matter of fact, before the election, we, on our own capacity, were able to empower 506 youths in the state, in different areas, you know. We'll be able to give them some little support, you know, give trainings to people who need it and all that. And uh, that actually helped us a lot to, you know, sanitized with the locals, even the hawkers were able to grab them uh, because these are the people that can take your message to places where you never envisage, you know. So if government can be able to do all that, uh, partner with pressure groups like ours and um, other pressure groups who do a similar things that we do and other organizations, NGOs, to help the people, it will make a whole lot of sense. And also, if you look at Delta State, Asaba in particular, you will see there's, a, 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 there's this drive in development. And this thing is not just a magic, it's, a, it's just because there is an enabling environment. The government have made the environment to be suitable. That is why you see people trooping in from abroad and the neighboring states to come and, you know, make this place a habitat. So if the place is, is, is cool as it is right now, of course, more development will, will start to come in. And I'm pleading, if the, the incoming administration can take opportunity of the uh, business uh, expansion that is about to take place, most importantly, the Niger, uh, uh, the Niger, uh, wharf that will soon come in, you know, it will make a whole lot of sense. We can, you can, you can create a large, uh, massive land uh, where you can make it an industrial hub, you know, it, it creates roads, tie it, even before building, tie it, you know, uh, 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 use the opportunity of this independent uh, lighting arrangement, you know, that the federal government have given autonomous to, to, to states to generate their own power. You can give power there, you know, make it standard, just like what you see in India and China, you know. We have a table land here where you can achieve all that. Make it industrial hub. People will now come by and set up the uh, uh, businesses or the factories for all different uh, type of uh, uh, sec sector of industrialization. Well, I think that will make a whole lot of sense and generate a whole lot of revenue for the state. There is often this confusion arising from pressure groups participating in politics. The Delta Youth Coalition, of which you are the President General, there is the APCON coordinated by one Mr. Tolani Ajimi Sobe. My interest is in knowing how harmonious, how cooperative these pressure groups are before, during, and after the elections in Delta State? Yes, uh, we as the political pressure groups, we have a whole lot of uh, strategies. As a result of that, we're able to engage ourselves 
because we know ourselves we're able to engage ourselves and have physical meetings and all that in order to plan on strategies on how to you know win election because that is the most important thing where well, our strategies is embedded on the realistic agenda for the incoming government that is the more agenda for sheriff Oberovori. so based on that we now saw that there is a whole lot that is coming to delta state so as people who need a better governance or rather who wants the dividend of democracy to extend to the people we have to key in because we have followers like for instance in delta youth coalition we have 176,210 followers in delta state and if that is done and uh, during this election they show that love that they belong to this group they show the capacity that they belong to this group by coming in mass in different uh, local governments in wards and you know uh, pulling units to show capacity and we delivered so these are the things that we expect even from other political pressure groups uh, who are yet uh, coming up because we don't expect every political group to be giant like us even us i believe that there are people who are even higher than <laughs> or doing better than what we have done you know so it's just like that it's gradual process i believe before the next election other pressure group will be able to build momentum well before i let you go people have varying impression of delta states you've seen you live and you're doing business in delta states which means you understand the workings of delta states what is your perception of the evolving delta states in the evolution of nigeria well um in uh, development uh, times uh, I know that Delta State would have been told is a fast growing state in Nigeria why do I say so you make emphasis based on statistics if you buy a plot of land here in Asaba say for instance 10 million naira in few months you can sell it 20 million that is the practical truth that will show you the inflow of people and demand on the property you know when uh, a, the demand is high okay the uh, the commodity the price of the commodity increases but when the demand is low of course you have to reduce the price of commodity so that is the practical aspect of Delta State as a state and with what is happening now in Delta State which I give kudos to the outgoing governor the Senator Dr. Atoifan Yokoa which he has done wonderfully well in his administration the incoming who is uh, right honorable Sheriff Oberivari he is going to bring in his more agenda that will now merge with what the outgoing governor had done he would now start from there and make a greater impact in delta state most in particular uh, uh delta state i mean uh, asaba here asaba so asaba will now be a center of attraction in all in all other among other towns in delta state well, huge delight having this conversation with you. Immeasurable thanks to you, Chibuzo, Mr. Dash, for your time and candor. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate you, Mr. Peter. Thank you very much.